Are you looking for the best way to gain long-term sustainable strength? Have you hit a wall with your lifts and you're looking for a way to break through, but adding more squats and bench press just isn't quite doing it? I wanna talk about why it's not working and the best way to gain long-term sustainable strength. So at the end of this video, you'll be able to break through and carry on consistently increasing your lifts. Welcome to Specific Personal Training. My name is Dan, where I help you find alignment and success in health and fitness. Now, if you want to stay up to date with all the latest content from this channel, then do hit the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. So I want to start by saying that there is a time and a place for smashing out heavy squats, benches and deadlifts. However, the problem that I see a lot in this day and age is balance actually to gain long-term strength because on one side you have lifters who that spend a lot of time foam rolling and talking about their program more than they do lifting and on the other side which is the side that I want to talk about more today is the complete opposite which as I've mentioned want to squat bench and deadlift every day every session they're doing two to three of those lifts and often heavy Majoring in the minors is the best way to gain long-term sustainable strength. These are the people that have not learned to major in the minors. So what do I mean by that? Well, these are the people that don't do any to little accessory work. We're talking about rows, banded work, good mornings, curls. They don't do therapy, mobility, proper warm-ups or post-work stretches exercises that are going to make all the little muscles stronger these minor league things are what's going to keep you consistently getting stronger and stay injury free i mean how are you going to get strong if you keep getting injured now i'm not saying most of your workout should be bicep and hamstring curls but just from the lifting perspective many people come to me and say oh dan my deadlift sucks should i switch stance without even looking at your technique. How is your grip strength? Are you all your muscles firing correctly? If not, why not? Lots of squat, bench and deadlift is great when you're starting out and wanting to get strong. That's why I have programs like Starting Strength and 5x5, five five, where it's lots of squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press, barbell rows. So if you've been training less than two years, then great, stick with that. But the problem when training barbell movements, particularly when it's just squat, bench and deadlift and very little else, is that the barbell movement causes imbalances in the body over time. The number one reason why you should do accessory work is because it's going to even out those imbalances over time. Do a survey of a bunch of lifters in your gym, and I mean proper strength lifters, not like gym bros. Um, but proper strength lift lifters and ask how many of them have had elbow pain and how many of them train their biceps regularly. I suffer from elbow pain and I used to suffer from it a lot worse. And this was because I used to do lots of heavy squats and tons of tricep work while doing very little bicep work. Remember, your muscles are all connected. So if one area grows lots like my tricep, but the other area I eat, my bicep doesn't, well then that's going to pull everything out of alignment and put a lot of strain on the body. Reason number two of the accessory work is to keep getting stronger. You might need to bring up the strength in a certain area to excel in that lift. As an example, grip is a good one. Your hand muscles aren't attached to your leg muscles, well, not directly anyway. And it's a fact that if your grip can't handle a certain weight, then you won't be able to pull it. This is why people use lifting straps, but it's not real strength in that regard, is it? <laughs> Certainly not transferable to the real world, unless you walk around with a bunch of lifting straps in your pocket all the time. And you can't use it on a powerlifting platform. And a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. If this is making sense to you so far, type a simple hell yeah in the comments below. As I shift on to another area of majoring in the minors, we talked about balances and doing a correct cool down is crucial for this. Now I hold my hands up, 
this is one area of the miners that I struggle in the most out of all of them. Now, a correct stretch down doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be some intense 45 minute yoga session. 10 minute stretch at the end of a session, like you used to do in your school years, is all you need. And as you know, you are smart people. It will help prevent imbalances and injuries over the long term, the same as warming up. Like I said, there are people that spend more time foam rolling and talking about their program than they actually do lifting. But on the other side, you have people who take a scoop of free workout, do two to three warm up sets, and then think that they're ready to go do five heavy sets of squats. One training session, sooner or later, they tweak a back muscle or something, and then they blame it on bad form or just pushing it too far when if they'd done an adequate warm-up they would have made it all the way through the session and possibly even pushed it further barbell movements are great they should be the base of any program they're certainly the base of any program that i design no matter what your goal is whether whether it's strength muscle gain fat loss compound moves and barbell movements should be at the core of it but at some point you need to start filling in those holes. You need to start experiencing the frontal plane, the transverse plane, corrective exercises. Now I know they're boring and they don't look cool. I know they're the little sissy things that you see people doing. Rotator cuffs and face pulls. Guys, there's a reason why it's so important because they fill in the gaps that the big exercises don't provide. Focus on your flexibility, focus on your agility, focus on your ability to move in space, focus on your ability to accelerate and decelerate, focus on your ability to generate power. Strength is just a component and all of these are the components of true strength. Okay, so I don't want this to be too much of a rant. I just wanted to show to everybody out there that there is a time and a place for majoring in the minors and it's not all about majoring in the majors, especially if you are looking to for the best way to gain long-term sustainable strength. Get your base strength and execution of these lifts down first, then as you are progressing, make sure that you are adding these into your workouts or at least taking the time out through your training year for these particular areas so you can have longevity and pain free as a strength athlete or trainer. Thanks everyone for watching this video and let me know if you liked it or disliked it by mashing the thumbs button and certainly if you disliked it leave a comment below let me know why. And the question of the day is do you take time out to major in the minors? In the description section is links to my other social media so by all means give me a follow and let's chat over there too. And if you haven't already, then click on the subscribe button and turn on the notifications to get all the latest videos from us. And if you want to watch more videos right now, then just click on one of these two icons here for more content.